Good afternoon. My name is Laura Kempthorne, and I'm the Executive Director for the Brandon Area Community Foundation. Normally, this time of year, uh, the Foundation offers free public presentations on the importance of wills and estate planning. Will Week is a collaboration between the Brandon Area Community Foundation, the Manitoba Bar Association, and the Public Guardian and Trustee of Manitoba. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, in-person sessions for Will Week 2020 have been cancelled. The great news about uh, today is with the help of technology, Andrea F. and Matthew Blunt, their lawyers from the Law Office of Patterson LLP, are here to volunteer their time to share information about the importance of a will, a healthcare directive, and the power of attorney. So thank you, Andrea and Matthew, for taking the time today to answer this year's Will We question. Questions. You're welcome. <laughs> So one of my first questions, we've got a list of questions, of course, for, for uh, getting a will made and, and uh, health care directives and uh, power of attorneys. So let's start off with uh, what are the essentials of creating a will? Uh, in your will, you need to appoint an executor, name beneficiaries, and then you need to uh, list the rights that are being given to that executor and any details specifically for the gifts to the beneficiaries, whether there's a trust or how those are to be handled. I'm sure you've heard this question many times, but can I actually create a will myself? Yes, I have heard that many times. Uh, there are mechanisms available uh, for people to prepare their own wills, uh, but I personally don't recommend them, mainly because any small mistake on them could render the will void. Okay. So aside from a lawyer, who else should I involve in my estate plan? Depending on the complexity of your estate, we typically recommend speaking to your accountant and with your financial advisor. All right, so what other assets are administered through or, or by a will? Uh, the assets in your will are anything that is in your own name and that does not already have a beneficiary designation. So it doesn't include any joint accounts or anything that's transferring by way of beneficiary designation, such as pension or life insurance. So can I actually leave uh, donations or a legacy to other nonprofit organizations in my will? Uh, yes, actually, that is a common request that we see. And I recommend talking to your lawyer about how to structure that and any of their recommendations with respect to that. Okay. What if all my property, including bank accounts, are held jointly? How does that um, affect my will? Anything that is owned jointly should be transferring to the other joint tenant by right of survivorship. However, there are some institutions that will treat it as if it is not a joint tenancy and will hold it for probate. Uh, but typically, uh, you should be speaking with your financial institution to find out what their um, policies are with respect to joint accounts. Okay, you mentioned the word probate. What, what does probate mean? A grant of probate is an order issued by the court that allows an executor to administer the estate in accordance with the will. In order to apply, the executor has to provide to the court an accounting of the estate assets. Okay. Does, uh, does every estate require probate? Not necessarily, no. It depends on the assets held and the policies of the institutions that hold those assets. Okay, so is there a fee associated with probate? Uh, as of June 1st of 2020, there will not be a probate fee in Manitoba. Until then, the typical fee is about 0.7% uh, of the value of the assets being administered. What happens if I get married or divorced after signing a will that I created? A marriage will void a will unless it's been made in specific contemplation of that particular marriage to a particular person on a specific day. Uh, divorce does not void a will, but it can void an appointment of an executor or a named beneficiary if that person is being named by virtue of being the spouse. So uh, the other question is, what happens when there is a child who is a beneficiary? 
Uh, it's recommended that the will be written to set up a trust for that child. And we will always ask you to specify an age at which a child should receive their funds. So I have a child from a previous marriage or a relationship. What should I know about that when in regards to creating a will? Blended families are becoming more and more common and they are about the most complex uh, estate plan uh, we see. Uh, it's always good to discuss with your lawyer uh, how the children are going to be treated and how your spouse is treated. Uh, but one thing I always like to note to people is that a stepchild is actually not recognized as a child. Uh, so if you're doing one of those wills yourself and you put, I want everything to go to my children, intending that will include a stepchild, it does not. So again, talk to your lawyer about how your children are treated when it's a blended family situation. What happens if I happen to pass away without a will? If that occurs, somebody has to apply to the court to be allowed to administer the estate. In order to do so, they have to post a bond with the court for double the value of the estate. And then depending on the size of the estate, they will have to find one or two people who have a personal net worth of more than double the value of the estate and who are willing to sign on your behalf saying that uh, you will do what you're intended to do. Um, and it is also the same process if you have named an executor and that person has predeceased you. So it's also important to make sure that your will is up to date because you can be treated as if you have no will if it is not up to date. Okay. So obviously there's far more information that, you know, many more questions that I could ask in regards to this. And we only have so much time, but the long and short of it is please see a lawyer. Yes. Yes. Great. So let's go on to power of attorney. Uh, why does one need a power of attorney? A power of attorney will allow the person you appoint to manage your affairs while you're alive, but incapacitated in some way, either mentally or physically. It has nothing to do with medical decisions. It only allows that person to handle any business related affairs that you could have. Okay. What are the, some of the obligations a person would have if they were acting as a power of attorney? The person acting as your attorney is obligated to act in your best interests and manage your affairs as you would have done. Obviously, if your attorney misappropriates funds from you while acting, they will be liable to you. Are there different types of powers of attorney? There are several different types of powers of attorney. So you can have a general power of attorney, which covers all of your business affairs, or you could appoint someone to do specific tasks for you in a specific power of attorney. If you were going to be out of the country for an extended time, then you could appoint someone to look after, say, your house for that time and nothing else. And there's also um, enduring powers of attorney. So all powers of attorney that we do at Patterson's are enduring. If not enduring, powers of attorney are revoked in the event of a mental infirmity. So you wanna make sure that your power of attorney is enduring so that it covers you whether you're mentally or physically disabled in some way. Okay. When, when does this all come into effect? having a power of attorney? So if you are in the hospital with say a broken leg and you're unable to manage your affairs, you, you can appoint someone or tell someone that they are now going to be acting as your attorney. Mm -hmm. And if it's the case that you're in the hospital and you're mentally incapacitated or on your way to being mentally incapacitated, then you would need probably a doctor's declaration that you're unable to manage your own affairs. Okay. So what happens if a person becomes mentally incompetent but doesn't have a power of attorney? So that involves a lot more expense and time. You would have to apply to the court for what's known as an order of comiteeship, 
which is a court order allowing you to deal with that person's affairs. Clearly that takes significant time and will cost significantly more than appointing a power of attorney. All right. Well, let's go on to the healthcare directives. Uh, can you tell me what actually is a healthcare directive? A healthcare directive gives direction to your next of kin as to the amount of care you want to receive if you're in the hospital and you're unable of conveying that yourself. What are, is, why do I really need one or why should we have a healthcare directive? It can be very stressful to your loved ones to try to make a decision and guess as to the amount of care you wish to receive. Clearly that's an uncomfortable decision to make in a trying time. And also there could be differences of opinion among loved ones as to the amount of care you should receive. So setting that out in a healthcare directive beforehand will save a lot of headaches and uncomfortable decisions. Would it make sense if I am changing my will to actually create a healthcare directive and, and a power of attorney? Does it make sense to do this all at once? It does I make sense to have it all done at once. And typically, if not all done at once, it becomes something that goes to the back burner that you will do one day and never get around to. So if you're coming in to see us, it does make sense to have all three prepared at once. So when we have them all prepared, where should I store this documentation? Generally, we recommend that wills be stored in the vault at your lawyers. They are your own document. You're free to take them out whenever you wish. The same with powers of attorney. Health care directives, we recommend that you keep a copy uh, where you keep your important papers, make sure your next of kin know about its location. And it's a good idea to keep a copy on file with your doctor as well. Okay. Well, those are all the questions I actually had on those three areas. And again, I know there's a lot more information that you guys have that you can share. Um, is there anything you really just want to add now uh, just to uh, kind of wrap this session up at all? Uh, I just like to recommend to people to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, I've been meaning to do this for about five years. Uh, or they'll come and see me for an initial appointment and then they just don't think of it after that. So I've started really following up with people. It's something that people don't want to think about uh, and it makes people uncomfortable. But once you have everything in place, it certainly makes it a lot easier if anything should go wrong. So definitely if you're thinking about doing it or make sure you put some thought into it today and call your lawyer and set up an appointment. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you and uh, you know they've seen this video and they want to know more information, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they would call the office. Uh, the number is 727-2424 and ask to set up an appointment uh, for an estate plan. Okay. And Matthew, anything else to add in regards to uh, uh, the topics that you spoke about? Please come in and see us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again for your time. And uh, uh, again, if anybody else is watching and, and they want to know more information, please contact Andrea or Matthew. Uh, again, you can contact them at Patterson's LLP. And if you want to reach out to me at the Brandon Area Community Foundation, I'm more than happy to help you get in touch with uh, either one of them. So thank you again to both. Lots of great information. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. You thank too, you. Laura.